So these aren't generally considered expensive, but hear me out. You're paying six to eight dollars for how many? Four? Six? A hundred? You never really know. When you could have the greatest of all time for this price right here. That's but cheaper. Okay, so today we're making dumplings, but not just any dumplings, completely homemade dumplings for this price. I know we already said it, but I just have to reiterate, this, this is ridiculous. Why would you not want this? This is like what you pay for like really crappy frozen ones that you, it says you gotta do it with the steam basket and everything, but in reality, you just pop it in the microwave and like the outside's still like frozen and the inside's piping hot and you're like, what have I done? Is that what you want? No. That doesn't sound good. We're gonna make three cooking methods. Pan fried, steamed, and a lacy skirt dumpling. You don't know what that is? You never put a little skirt on? Do a little dance? Ha ha ha. Let's, let's just make this. Let's just stop talking and make this. Okay, let's have a silly little discussion of fresh dumpling dough versus store-bought. One package of circular dumpling wrappers cost around $2.50. That seems good, but let's make our own first. You'll need a large bowl, add in one and a half cups or 225 grams of all-purpose flour, half a cup or 75 grams of bread flour, mix to combine, then separately get two-thirds of a cup or 147 grams of hot water. And when I say hot, I mean hot, hot, good low! <laughs> Dissolve half a teaspoon or two grams of kosher salt into that water, then pour that into your flour mixture and begin mixing until you get a shaggy dough, then knead that thing for about five to seven minutes or until you get a beautifully smooth and supple dough. Wrap that with plastic wrap, give it a wholesome and kind-hearted personality, and rest for 15 to 20 minutes. From there, you'll divide it into four to six pieces, and using a pasta roller or a rolling pin, roll it into a very thin sheet. You know, on a pasta roller, you'll obviously need to roll it, starting from the thickest setting and landing somewhere around number five or six. And by the way, you know, thin is not barely thinner than a two by four. You wanna be able to see your god dang hand through this dough. Once you have your sheet, get a three to four inch biscuit cutter, depending on how big you want these, and cut out circles. That's it, repeat that with all of your dough. Now, that puts you at this price for homemade dumpling dough that makes a similar amount of one package of store-bought, which is around 50 wrappers total. I will say that it is significantly more annoying to make these without the pasta pasta roller and, well, pasta rollers cost money. So it's gonna be up to you to decide what to do here. Now, you can't call it a wrapper unless you got something to fill it with. Filling is undeniably easy, so no complaining to Papa. Get yourself a medium bowl and add one pound or 450 grams of ground pork. To that, you'll add three cabbage leaves finely chopped. And by the way, quick method of fine chopping cabbage. Remove their cores. I very finely slice this into ribbons, then turn that the other way around and cut against the grain to get a very, very fine chop. Now, optionally, you can give it a few more passes with a knife to get it even finer. Then add that to your pork along with a one inch knob of ginger, fresh grated, three cloves of very finely chopped garlic, three green onions, very thinly sliced, half a teaspoon or three grams of sugar, a quarter teaspoon or two grams of fine sea salt. Yes, this looks like more because uh, I got a little buck wild here on the salt. One tablespoon or 14 grams of soy sauce, one teaspoon or four grams of optional sesame oil. Then using your hands, give it a nice mix, kneading for about two minutes or until everything is thoroughly incorporated and homogenized. That's it. That's the filling. Now before we fill our little baby dumpers, we're going to make our dipping sauce. In a small bowl, add a quarter cup or 60 milliliters of white vinegar and a quarter cup or 60 milliliters of soy sauce. Mix that together and that's actually it. Somehow this perfectly balanced mix of tart and umami saltiness is what makes up that classic liquid that you dunk your dumpers into that lead directly to a good old fashioned buzz. Feel free to add a tiny splash of toasted sesame oil or chili oil. I did both, but neither are necessary and it's perfectly delicious without it. So we're not counting that towards the total. Although if we did, it would be this much. All right, we're ready to fill. Get yourself a row of dumpling wrappers and fill like so. First, add a heaping teaspoon of meat into the center. Brush the perimeter of a wrapper lightly with water. Then to shape, first close it like a taco, pinching the top of the taco together. And starting with one side, crimp one part of the dough towards that center. Pinch to keep it folded. Then working your way to the edge, crimp a second one over that, and then the third. And now you've crimped one side. Then crimp the other side, bing, bang, boom. Make sure there's no air bubbles and all the seams are sealed. And that's it. Look, it will take some practice to get right. It's okay if it's not perfect. There's no reason to feel embarrassed, no matter how terrible, pathetic, or ugly it could possibly be. Look, I'm joking. Wrapping dumplings is like life. Before your very eyes, you observe what looks like such a long stretch of road. You may be unsure how long it will take to get to the other side, or if you will at all, for that matter. But working through each of these things, one by one, one foot after the other, and sooner than you know it, you've made it to the other side. Dumplings. Like life. Anyway, once you've repeated that with all of your dumplings, you're ready to cook these bad boys. I got three cooking methods for you. Pan fried, steamed, and a lacy little skirt. 
Obviously, the easiest version is steamed. Get a steamer basket, place it over a simmering shallow pot of water. Add in some cabbage leaves so your dumplings don't stick to the basket. Fit as many dumplings as you can, within reason. Don't get them all over each other. Then cover the top and let that steam for a total of eight minutes. Remove the top, hit it with some optional sesame oil, and well, that's it. Like I said, easy. Now for the pan fried version, get a 12 inch nonstick skillet, add just enough vegetable oil to coat the bottom of the pan with a very thin layer. Heat that bad boy to medium heat. Then once that's hot, add in your dumplings in a circular pattern as many as you can without overlapping. And just let those bad boys cook and get some color for two to three minutes or until the bottoms look like this. Good lord. Look at that thing. Little bubbles all around, golden brown, it's a beautiful thing. Anyway, once they look divine on the bottom, quickly add in a quarter cup or 60 milliliters of water, immediately cover with a lid, and let them steam, maintaining that temp for three minutes. Then remove the lid, and if any water is remaining at all, let it continue to simmer until all of that is evaporated, and they're done. Remove them from the pan, and you have beautifully steamed and crisp bottomed gyoza. Wow! Now last, but certainly the most exciting, is the skirt version. These take a little practice. Now it's almost exactly the same as the gyoza version. Only difference is that once you've added your dumplings, and they've reached that crusty golden brown bottom that makes me absolutely buzz. Instead of adding water, you're going to whisk together a slurry consisting of half a cup or 118 grams of water and two tablespoons or 19 grams of all-purpose flour. Whisk that until thoroughly combined, then add that to the pan, making sure it coats the entire bottom, close the lid, and let it steam for three to four minutes. Remove the lid and let it bubble out any additional water, and you should have a crazy thin, twill-like crust on the bottom. Carefully loosen it from the pan, then invert that onto a plate, and that's it, bud. This is pretty cool. All right, I think it looks cool. And it does have a function because it adds an unbelievable crunch to the bottom of your dumplings. Now we have dumplings cooked three different ways with all of that for a price of this per serving. Look, it doesn't get any better than this. Play with the fillings to customize it further while I play with my dumpling. And by that, I mean it's taste test time. Woo, look at that. Sorry, I forgot he had headphones on, that's my bad. So this isn't even all of them and it's for this price right here. Three iterations, bip boppity boop. I always see people dunk them like that, right? And then you eat it and you're like, oh, that was pretty good. Except like literally none of the sauces in it. So what you do, you bite a little bit, right? You open her up and you spoon that in there. You can see it drip down. Pop it. Good lord. You pop it and lock it. Oh my God. Right off the bat, steam versus pan fried, there's no comparison. See, that brown, that little brown part of the gyoza skin will make you buzz instantly. Mmm. He ain't even gotta ask me out on a date first. I'll go straight for that. Last but not least are these fellas. Now, Josh, why, why put a skirt on? Because it's cute? Wrong. Because it's crisp. It's extra crisp. That's crisp. And these have been sitting for like an hour. For a little extra effort, you can have all of that however you want. It'll take you the same amount of time to make this as opposed to even getting takeout. I'm sorry, but my dumplings are already done and I've saved money, so. Ah. You wanna know what else is full of big, glistening dumpies ripe for the picking? B-roll. Okay, so that is it. We made our dumplings. They were fantastic. Fantasmic? Hold on now. Can we call Miriam Webster? Yes, hello? I'd like to add a new word. You don't like it? Oh, that's fine. These dumplings came out beautifully. It's a simple process. At the end of the day, it just takes time to do the little, uh, but that's fun, right? You bring people over, have a great old time. You drink some champagne or maybe nothing. Maybe just drink water. But nonetheless, you can have a beautiful time and dozens and dozens of dumplings for an egregiously low cost that are the best that you'll ever eat. That's the whole point of this series. Take it or leave it, buddy. Ah.